Dr. Sim Sidney Temba Zola Square, as he was known in exile as Zola Bona and Martin Luangu Luangu, was born on the 14th of April, 1942, in Simons Town, near Cape Town. He received his primary education in New Brighton, Port Elizabeth, as well as retreat in Cape Town. On completion of his primary education, he received a scholarship to proceed to Lovedale High School in Alice in the Eastern Cape, where he was first introduced to political activism where he, when he participated in the school boycotts in protest against the imposition of Bantu education in 1953. The experience convinced him of the need to foster unity amongst the oppressed masses in South Africa, and he subsequently joined the African National Congress in 1956. At Lovedale High School, Dr. Square met and worked with Mr. Govan Mbeki, whose commitment to action and sound knowledge of rural politics had a strong influence on his political outlook. He later enrolled at the University of Fort Hay to study for a law degree that was not completed for political reasons. When the ANC opted for the armed struggle in 1960, Dr. Square became one of the active organizers for Umkontuwe Siswe, which made him a target of the security forces. He fled to Tanzania in 1962, where he underwent military training in Kongwa. Later, he proceeded to the Unit of Soviet Socialist Republics, uh, now known as the USSR, and specialized in communications. Upon his return from the USSR, he was first based in Tanzania and later at the ANC head office in Lusaka, Zambia. In 1968, Dr. Square was sent to the University of Leipzig Germany, Democratic Republic. He graduated with a Doctor of Laws degree in 1978. Upon his return from the, from the German Re Democratic Republic, he was deployed in different capacities in the ANC. In 1982, he set up the first ANC office in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and began, became its representative at the Organization of African Unity, now called the African Union. In 1985, Kabwe Consultative Conference of the ANC resolved, amongst others, to revive the legal unit to deal with the legal matters affecting the ANC. Dr. Square was recalled by the ANC from Addis Ababa to set up the Department of Legal and Constitutional Affairs. President O.R. Tambo charged this department with the responsibility to develop constitutional guidelines that would serve as a lot star to the ANC in the future drafting of a democratic South African constitution. He carried out this responsibility with distinction and commitment that later contributed to the existence of a transformative constitutional state in South Africa. Having been exposed to human rights and diplomacy issues at the United Nations, he was committed to the existence of justice within the ANC and established the Officer of Justice position. Dr. Square, oh, sorry. When the ANC at the Kabul conference resolved to establish the Officer of Justice position, Dr. Square was appointed and in this capacity, he made sure that justice prevailed. Dr. Square returned to South Africa and led the Department of Legal and Constitutional Affairs. He was also appointed as the chairperson of the Constitution Committee of the ANC, which served as a research and consultative think tank to the development of the post-apartheid constitution. It was in this context that he assisted in the setting up of the Center for Development Studies at the University of the Western Cape as an institutional agency to carry out research and publish an occasional paper series on transform transitional politics and their impact on constitutional and legal dispensations. It was through the instrumentality of these papers that the evolving thinking in the ANC on its positions on constitutionalism and its transformative character were disseminated to the public to debate and information. In this respect, he authored and published papers on, for example, the land question, judiciary, local government, and constitutionalism. Dr. Square participated in the establishment of the South African Defense Fund. From 1990 to 1995, he was president of the Board of Trustees of the National Commission of the Rights of Children, and this demonstrated his compassion and belief in social justice. He was elected to the National Executive Committee of the ANC at its first conference after it returned from exile. In 1991, he became a member of the National Working Committee of the ANC. He was elected to these positions at subsequent ANC elective conferences until 2012.
He was a member of the ANC Negotiations Committee on the Post-Apartheid Constitution at the Convention for Democratic South Africa. He was served as the chairperson of the ANC National Disciplinary Committee. Dr. Square was responsible as coordinator for setting up this ANC Civil Service Unit in 1990 which trained and educated anti-apartheid activists in preparation for careers in the public service. These developments were timely because the ANC had to, at the same time, engage President F. W. de Klerk's government on issues pertaining to the civil service. The public service, as Dr. Square viewed it, was central to the governance of the country, its stability and efficiency, as well as effective delivery of services to all South Africans, regardless of race, class, and gender. Therefore, he ensured that the bilateral discussions and multi-party negotiations on the civil service were comprehensive enough to improve the lives of all South Africans, especially the dispossessed. He was a strong advocate for the education and relevant training of public servants. These had to incorporate the notion of batupele, people first. He was determined to establish a humanitarian public service grounded in new constitutional values, informed by social justice and egalitarianism. In 1994, President Nelson Mandela appointed Dr. Square as the first post-apartheid minister of public service and administration. The first challenge he encountered in this job was the fact that his ministry had no department as all the departmental staff res resorted under the powerful Public Service Commission. He had to establish a new department from scratch. This, however, provided him with an opportunity to infuse the public service with black South Africans without having to deal with the nightmare of getting rid of the old order public servants whose jobs were constitutionally guaranteed by the sunset clauses of the Constitution. The second difficult task was to knit together a fragmented public service that was dismembered by apartheid. This task was not only made difficult by the number of different civil services, which were 14 at the time, but also by the fact that these civil services were at different stages of development. This mainly found expression in the varying efficiencies, competencies, and salary dispensations that characterized these civil services. Notwithstanding this, ma this mammoth challenges, Dr. Square's inherent drive and uncompromising commitment to service made it possible for him to complete the rationalization process within the prescribed time frames. The white paper on the transformation of South African public service was developed and adopted to lay the foundation for the legislative changes designed to align the public service with the values and ethos of the new constitutional dispensation. Dr. Square was central to the drafting and adoption of this document. He was found a member of the Commonwealth Association for Public Administration and Management and served on its first board. He strongly supported the establishment of the South African Association for Public Administration and Management that has successfully published a nationally and globally accredited competitive journal of public administration. Dr. Square was the Minister of Social Development from 1999 to 2009. He was the champion of South Africa's comprehensive, comprehensive social protective system. Under his leadership, the Department of Social Development developed one of the world's largest social assistance programs. For him, children's rights were non-negotiable. His push saw, saw the children's support grant extended to children up to the age of 18 years as defined in the Constitution. He was also passionate about the rights of older persons and people with disabilities. Hence, in the 15-year review of the Department of Social Development, the South African government concluded that the social assistance program was its most effective anti-poverty intervention. Dr. Square established the South African Social Security Agency to administer and manage a singular national social assistance program to cater for the poor and vulnerable in our society. He emphasized collaboration with other government departments. He chaired the Commission of Social Development in the UN, actively brought together ministers of social de development in the Southern African Development Community region, and was also elected president and chairperson of the UN Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization's Management of Social Transformations program, which spearheaded the regional fora of ministers of social development in all regions of the world. 
He initiated collaboration between his department, the University of Oxford, and the University of Guadalupe Natal. This resulted in hundreds of senior policymakers in national and provincial government departments being trained in evidence-based policymaking. Upon retirement from active polit politics, he was appointed South Africa's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom of, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland in September 2011. He was bestowed with the freedom of the City of London. In May 2011, the University of Oxford established a series of annual lectures titled the Dr. Zola Square Lecture on South African Social Policy. Dr. Square is survived by his wife, former Ambassador Tutugile Square, three sons, Vuyo, Kedutula, and Bogani, two daughters, Pila and Mandisa, and 12 grandchildren. <laughs> 